The Blitnikoff is an award given to the nation's best wide receiver each and every year, and just like every season, there will be someone who takes home the trophy at the end of the year. In today's video, I want to talk about the 10 semifinalists for the 2021 Bolitnikov, go through who they are, how they have done this year, and at the end of the video, I'm going to give my take on who I think will win the award. But right before we get into it, nearly 80% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel, so be sure to hit that button, smash that like button for the algorithm, turn on post notifications, and let me know another topic I can do next. Now, let's get started and talk about the 2021 Bolitnikov Award. The first player we need to talk about is Pittsburgh wide receiver Jordan Addison. The star everyone has been talking about has been Kenny Pickett, but Jordan Addison has been extremely impressive. Coming out of the state of Maryland, Addison was actually a four-star recruit, and he decided to sign with Pitt. He was either going to play wide receiver or safety, but he immediately made an impact as a receiver. He was part of the class of 2020, and he broke out as a true freshman. Last year, he caught 60 passes for 666 yards and four touchdowns, and he was one of the better freshmen in America. Going into 2021, Addison was expected to be good, but I don't think anyone thought he would be this good. So far, he's already caught 60 passes for 1,070 yards and 11 touchdowns, and he has been Kenny Pickett's go-to target. He's gone for over 100 yards in five games this year, and he's even caught three touchdown passes in a game on two different occasions. I absolutely love Addison, and I'm excited to see how he finishes the year. Coming up next, we have David Bell. If you grew up in Indiana, you know who David Bell is, as he went to Warren Central High School and is one of the best athletes in Indiana high school football history. He decided to take his talents to Purdue, and he was extremely under-recruited. He was still a four-star recruit and nearly a top 100 player, but he did not have the offers that many would have expected. He made an immediate impact at Purdue alongside Rondale Moore, as in his freshman year, he caught 86 passes for 1,035 yards and 7 touchdowns, and he was one of the best freshman receivers in America. In 2020, with the weird year, his numbers took a slight dip, as he caught 53 passes for 625 yards and a career-high 8 touchdowns. So far in 2021, though, Bell has been dominant. While he only has 5 touchdowns, he has already caught 75 passes for 1,106 yards, and he leads the country in numerous categories. He's helped Purdue beat two top 5 teams, Bell is going to continue to have a big season, and I think he has a legitimate shot at bringing home the award. We're going to have to wait and see though. Coming out of Nazareth High School in Nazareth, Pennsylvania, Jahan Dotson was a pretty big deal coming out of high school. He was a four-star recruit, a top 200 player, and someone who was going to make an immediate impact for the Nittany Lions. As a freshman in 2018, Dotson caught 13 passes for 200 yards, and then in 2019, he started to emerge. He caught 27 passes for 488 yards and five touchdowns, as he became one of the better young receivers in the Big Ten. 2020 is when Dotson would break out, as he caught 52 passes for 884 yards and eight scores. That's why he was one of the best receivers going into the Big Ten in 2021, and so far he has lived up to the hype. At one point, Mel Kuyper had him as the top receiver prospect in the 2022 NFL Draft, and that has come after 80 catches for 993 yards and 9 touchdowns. He has been extremely dominant for the Nittany Lions, and has been the go-to receiver for Sean Clifford, and I think he really does have a legitimate shot at winning this award. In terms of breakout receivers, no player was more hyped up or expected to take a big leap than Josh Downs. Coming out of North Gwinnett High School in Sewanee, Georgia, Downs was a top 100 player, the number 17 receiver, and one of the top playmakers in the class of 2020. He was buried behind the big four of Michael Carter, Javante Williams, De'Ami Brown, and Daz Newsome his freshman year, but he emerged in their game against Texas A&M. As a freshman, he caught seven passes for 119 yards and three touchdowns, but everyone knew in 2021 he was going to be Sam Howell's go-to target. He has definitely lived up to the hype, as he's caught 82 passes for 1,109 yards and eight touchdowns as a true sophomore. He will not be eligible for this year's draft, but Downs has become a superstar for the Tar Heels despite them falling off this year. Unfortunately, Drake London is likely not going to win this award because he's been out for the year with an injury, but he went on an incredible tear this year. Coming out of Moore Park High School, London was a pretty big deal. He was a top 300 player, the number 35 wide receiver, and a four-star recruit in the class of 2019. He decided to go to USC, where he pretty much had an immediate impact. As a freshman, he caught 39 passes for 567 yards and 5 touchdowns, and in 2020, he also had a great year. He caught 33 passes for 502 yards and 3 scores. 2021 is when he has gone off. Despite USC having a pretty terrible season, London caught 88 passes for 1,084 yards and 7 touchdowns, 
and was on his way to winning this award, becoming a first-team All-American and a likely first-round pick. As we all know, he had a gruesome injury, and I don't think London is going to win the award, but he is a really fun player to watch. Chris Olave was not supposed to be the superstar he is today. Coming out of Mission Hills High School in San Marcos, California, Olave was only a three-star recruit. His quarterback, Jack Tuttle, was the most hyped up player on the team, but he has become a bust while Olave has become a superstar. He was only a three-star recruit in the class of 2018, but he still became a big deal as a freshman at Ohio State. In 2018, he caught 12 passes for 197 yards and three touchdowns, but 2019 would be his breakout year. He caught 49 passes for 849 yards and 12 scores. In 2020, his numbers took a slight dip, but so did every single player. He only caught 50 passes for 729 yards and 7 touchdowns, but going into 2021, he decided to skip on the draft to come back and help Ohio State this year. It's paid off as he's caught 51 passes for 708 yards and 11 touchdowns, and while his numbers may be a little bit lower than some of the other guys previously mentioned, he does have Jackson Smith and Jigba and Garrett Wilson as teammates, and that is a three-headed monster for Ohio State, so while his numbers have dipped, he's a legitimate candidate for this award. When talking about Wake Forest receivers going into 2021, DeCorey Roberson was the guy everyone was talking about. Instead, A.T. Perry has become a superstar for Sam Hartman and the Demon Deacons. Coming out of Park Vista Community High School in Lake Worth, Florida, Perry didn't have a ton of big-time offers coming out of high school. He decided to settle on Wake Forest, and he was only a three-star recruit and was barely a top 1,500 player in the class of 2018. He was never expected to be the superstar he is today, and honestly, his stats weren't anything special. In 2019, he caught four passes for 62 yards and a touchdown, and in 2020, he only caught 15 passes. So far in 2021, though, he has been spectacular. He's caught 47 passes for 918 yards and 11 touchdowns, and he could find himself as a first-team All-ACC selection if he keeps this up, and he's playing his way into the 2022 NFL Draft. One of the best stories of the 2021 season has been Bailey Zappi and this Western Kentucky team. He was a transfer from Houston Baptist, and he brought along his receiver, Jareth Stearns, as well. No one expected Stearns to be a Bolitnikoff finalist, but he is. Coming out of the state of Texas, Jareth was not that big of a deal, as he was not even a top 2,000 player. He was a two-star recruit, and he was headed to FCS football at Houston Baptist. In three years, though, he was a star at Houston Baptist. He caught 68 passes as a freshman, 106 passes as a sophomore, and 47 passes as a junior. Because of that, he transferred to the FBS level, and his numbers are unbelievable in 2021. So far, he has 111 receptions for 1,368 yards and 11 touchdowns, and he is on his way to becoming a first-team All-American and a potential first-round draft pick. I think he has a legit shot at bringing home this award, as there's still a couple more games to play, and his numbers are unbelievable. Another surprising name on this list has been Devin Tompkins from Utah State. Coming out of Dunbar High School in Fort Myers, Florida, Tompkins was a zero-star recruit and wasn't even ranked in the 247 Sports Database. That is pretty insane if you think about it, but he decided to go to Utah State. As a freshman in 2018, he didn't make much of an impact, but as a sophomore, he broke out. He caught 40 passes for 536 yards and 4 touchdowns, and in 2020, his numbers took a major dip. He only caught 20 passes for 214 yards and a touchdown, so no one thought he'd be a superstar in 2021. Instead, he has broken out. He's caught 77 passes for 1,441 yards and 8 touchdowns, and while Utah State isn't the biggest program in the world, Tompkins has become a superstar for the Aggies. He'll be a first-team all-conference player, and is likely going to hear his name called in the 2022 NFL Draft. It wouldn't be an award list without an Alabama Crimson Tide player, but in terms of the receiver spot, everyone thought John Mechie was going to be the superstar this year. Instead, it's been Jamison Williams. Coming out of Cardinal Ritter High School in St. Louis, Missouri, Jamison Williams decided to take his talents to Ohio State. He was a top 100 player, the number 13 receiver, and the number one player in his state in the 2019 class, but his impact was not felt at Ohio State. As a freshman in 2019, he caught six passes for 100 yards and a touchdown, and in 2020, his production wasn't much better, as he only caught nine passes for 154 yards and two touchdowns. He was underutilized because of all the talent in front of him, so he decided to enter the transfer portal to save his career. What did he settle on? The Alabama Crimson Tide. So far in 2021, Williams has been a star in multiple areas. He returns kicks and punts and has actually had a few touchdowns in that department, but more importantly, he has 51 receptions for 1,028 yards and 10 touchdowns as a receiver, and he's likely going to be a first-team All-SEC selection. I've seen him on big boards as a first-round pick, and he's been a pleasant surprise for the Alabama Crimson Tide. 
When it comes to who should win the award, David Bell has probably had the biggest impact of any of the receivers, but he does not have the touchdowns or the numbers to be the guy. Chris Olave is one of the most dominant players, but with Jackson Smith and Jigba and Garrett Wilson beside him, he's not going to have the numbers to do it. Jahan Dotson will probably get pretty close, but at the end of the day, I don't know if he's going to have the touchdowns to do it. And Devin Tompkins may not have the impact to win it. The guy who I think is going to win the award is Jareth Stearns from Western Kentucky. His numbers are unbelievable and out of this world, and when you have that many catches and that much of an impact on your team, you deserve to win the award, and I think he has been the best receiver in the country. People will criticize the teams he's played in the competition, but I'm not really too worried about that, and I think he is going to take home the trophy. What do you guys think, though? Be sure to let me know in the comment section who is the best wide receiver in the country, who will win the award, who is left off the watch list, and what topic should I do next? Be sure to let me know, smash that like button, subscribe, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.